Welcome to another Mercy Moment Emory episode, and I just had to highlight this sign. She believed she could, so she did. And this was given to Emory on Christmas Day of 2019. You can see her life, first year of life laid out in picture format, just here in her room right now with, uh, with the one and the only, the overcoming Emory. Say hello, Emory. Say hello. My little champ, champion overcomer. I wanted to just take a moment, friends, and talk squarely how, how much of a gift life is. It can be over in the blink of an eye. It can be over just like that. It's gone. David compared life to a mere breath. And the reality is it can be over fast. And this little champion right here, my little Emery, whose name means brave, courageous, and powerful, had a scary call and another brush with death on December 29th, 2019. It was a really rough week, friends. From Christmas Day forward, she had a heart rate on the 26th at 4 a.m. It was 220. And she camped out in the 200s for about an hour, no matter what we did. You talk about scary moments as parents. The next morning, the same story. Heart rate was elevated. And then December 29th, at 7 a.m., I called Kimberly down. I had just spent the night with her. And uh, I elevated heart rate. I didn't think anything of it. But little that I know is Kim came down her heart rate literally dropped to about 76, which isn't good. And then within less than a minute, I'm not exaggerating, with less than a minute, it went from 76, it was probably less than 30 seconds, it dropped from 76 to 15. Oh my goodness. It was scary as such a pathetic word to describe it, it was horrifying. And then her heart rate soon after started following and plummeting. And next thing I know, Kim's getting Emery on the floor right here, right here in this very spot on the ground. And she's getting ready for chest compressions. Emery's turning blue. I'm on the phone with 911. I say, get here now, now, 5766 Charlotte Parkway. Now, get here. Don't have time for your questions. And Kim's screaming, she's going unconscious. And I'm like freaking out. Oh my gosh, if you can even picture any of your kids going blue, then unconscious, and you're in your home, and you've done everything, emergency procedures. We've, we're have we very, very, very trained in handling complex airway situations and emergency. We, we got some heavy training. <laughs> we're not naive. And things dropped out. The bottom just dropped out. Next thing I know, I have paramedics bombarding our house. They're plowing the door, the fire department soon follows, and before we know it, friends, the whole room is filled with personnel, and it's frantic. They're running in and out, getting the stretcher. Like, I know it's urgent when they're, they're just in a buzz. Oh, man. This was so traumatic, I really can't even do justice to what happened. You have to experience it, and I hope you never do. I just want to be straight there. I hope you never have to experience that. It was horrifying. And in that place, we, we, we came, they got her out, Kim hopped in the ambulance. And a crazy backstory, the night before, Kim had been sick from Christmas Day until the 28th. Kim and I were praying together and we had a hell of a week. One of the worst weeks I've had in a long, 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 long time which says a lot, our situation has been pretty hard. And uh, it was rough, she had been sick, so she had been quarantined away from Emory. So we're praying that night over Zoom. She's in our library room, I'm in our room. And the coolest thing happened is we're praying. I'm, I'm praying in Jesus' name, brand new lungs, Jesus' name, brand new sinuses, Jesus' name, brand new body healing in Jesus' name. And as I'm praying, I don't know this, but Kimberly, felt this intense heat fill her whole body. Her own words, her own story, her own testimony. And as this heat filled her body, 
God is, can, describes himself as a consuming fire. That's how he describes himself, a consuming fire. So he, he, he fills her body with heat and brings full healing to her body. That night, she sneezes one more time and she knew it was all gone. So the next morning at 7 a.m. and I'm calling her down here and everything, the bottom drops out from beneath us and we have the paramedics. They get her out and uh, Kim, for the first time, I sit in the front of the ambulance because the fire chief jo jumps on and he's doing chest compressions. And then those horrible words come, she's coded. They flip on the lights, something we, I, don't, I didn't know. If sirens are on for paramedics from what we learned through experience, that means someone's coding, someone's dying. So I wanna encourage you, please don't take that lightly. Please don't be the moron. And I'm gonna say it that way because someone's life's on the line. When someone is in that ambulance and the lights are on, they're dying. So I hope this impacts you and I'm just shooting straight because that's life and death, friend. That's life and death, so don't be that person. Anyways, they get her to the hospital. Kim and or Jen, our good friend Cunha, and I hop in the car. We're following behind. We're probably 15 minutes behind. Running red lights, getting there. And uh, any parent would do that, so I'm not, <laughs> just that is what it is. When your kid's dying, you do whatever it takes to get there. So we get there and it feels like a freaking OR scene on a, like a medical TV show. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You've watched shows where it's buzzing, everyone's moving, numbers still aren't stable, things are looking still dangerous. And in that place, my heart sunk, man. This was, was horrible. And I share this whole story to, to impact and imprint you with the gift that your children are. If you have healthy kids, please don't take them for granted. Please give them a huge hug and let this, this reality sink in. They are a great gift. Their health is such a gift, man. I've known nothing of a healthy child. First one passed 58 days, severely ill. Emery almost codes on us and almost passes at just two years old. She's gonna be two and a half pretty quick here, turning three July 19th. We've known nothing but sickness. So if you have a healthy kid and you're complaining, Please get a grip, renew your perspective, get context. If you have a healthy kid, you have more than you can ever even understand. And I'm not making this a poor Zach, poor Kim. That's not the point. I'm just making the point that a healthy kid is such a gift. And one day, I hope you appreciate it. I hope your heart's filled with gratitude because it can be gone. Our health is a gift. It's no guarantee, no matter how in fit, no matter how healthy, no matter how good you eat, one day, it's all over, and you don't determine that day. It's appointed for man to die once, and then the Bible says, then comes judgment. I was so renewed this, just tonight, listening to Billy Graham on just the sobriety of how fleeting life is, and the fact that we reap what we sow more than we sow, later than we sow, and that reaping happens here, and then it happens in eternity on a higher level. And I just wanna, I wanna plead with you, friend, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. He's put Kimberly and I as a living demonstration of some of the worst adversity that life can bring. And yes, we've gotten beat down, we've gotten discouraged, we've gotten depleted at moments, but here's what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to testify to my father's faithfulness that he comes through every time Every time when I'm at my lowest low and I just feel like I am shot. It's a bad confession, first of all, because that's a lie. <laughs> There's always more. He is eternally and infinitely strong, wise, and loving, and he is able to flip the worst of the worst. And I'm just speaking in faith. I speak breakthrough over 2020 for Emery's health, that she is in a skyrocket, that she is then a jump in ways that you're gonna know that this is supernatural. I speak supernatural healing, blessing, peace, and health over Emery's body. 
for you, the world, to know that Jesus is Lord and he came with healing in his wings to establish his kingdom of peace, of prosperity, of complete unity under his lordship as king. And he is, he is the Alpha and the Omega. Everything in history points to him and history is winding down. He is king. So I want to encourage you today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart and let our family suffering, let it just, just etch into your heart and soul the gratitude of the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of healthy kids, the gift that life is because one day it's all over. And as I was so renewed tonight, one day it's all over and we stand before God and the reaping is final. The greatest greatest yielding is to turn to Jesus as Lord, to believe in his finished work that he died bearing all of the sin, all of our brokenness, and he was buried, but he was raised from the dead. Jesus raised from the dead three days later, and through his resurrection, he defeated death, sin, the grave, and every adversity that would try to break us is actually going to make us because of his resurrection because he turns the worst of the worst for the best of the best and our lives are living proof watch it unfold in 2020 i speak in faith because i know who my father is and i believe he is bringing so many cool things and that that final press to try and destroy emory is going to be a laughing matter because satan has lost and jesus is lord he is king and he is ruler of all so May you be magnified, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Do what only you can do. Breakthrough 2020.